got another set of questions for the bonding and structure topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so make a start to the dot and cross diagram for calcium nitride so we're going to need three calcium two plus ions I've gone for a full shell of eight electrons in the outer shell there you can have an empty shell if you want and I've gone for crosses for calcium which means for the nitride ion we're going to need two of those three minus charge so I'm going for open circles for the electrons for the nitrogen so there's five of those in the outer shell and there's the three donated electrons for each of the nitride ions moving on to the equation calcium nitride reacts with water to form a solution containing two alkaline compounds so alkaline means there's hydroxide ions present so calcium hydroxide will be one of them and the other one is ammonium hydroxide you can actually say ammonia for that so i'll show you both equations but that's what i would go for given it has mentioned alkaline so we'll balance the calciums first so i'm going to need a three in front of the calcium hydroxide two nitrogens on the left so i'm going to need two ammonium hydroxides and now we'll just count up the remaining atoms so i'm going to go for oxygen so two o's times three so there's six o's in there and another two there so we need eight o's on the left so we need eight h2o's if you've gone for the equation with ammonia in it's absolutely fine and that's how it would balance moving on to the next part so obviously we're going to form calcium oxide if calcium reacts with oxygen so we just need to put the ions into the relevant circles calcium forms a two plus ion oxygen forms the o2 minus ion we just need to make sure that we have opposite charges next to each other moving on to the dot and cross diagram for n2o so there's a clue here in the fact that they've said that it's a linear molecule so that means there are two bonding regions in the valence shell of that central nitrogen so remember oxygen has six valence electrons and the nitrogens have five each so the first thing i'm going to do is put a pair of electrons from the central nitrogen into this bond here so this is going to be a coordinate bond so that means all of oxygen's six valence electrons would be lone pairs so the central nitrogen's got three more electrons so i'm going to make this bond here a triple covalent bond so that means i need to match these electrons with three from this nitrogen and we'll have a lone pair left here so the dot and cross diagram looks like that Moving on to the next question, so you can see I've written up here nothing to do with breaking covalent bonds. It's the classic wrong answer for this type of question. So we've got to establish the type of um, structure that we've got in the halogens. So they have simple covalent or simple molecular structures. And between the diatomic halogen molecules, we've got intermolecular forces. And we should really specify the type. So you could either say induced dipole-dipole forces or London forces so obviously to boil a halogen you've got to overcome these intermolecular forces so why is the boiling point going up as you go down the group it's because you've got more electrons in your molecule and therefore the London forces or the induced dipole dipole forces are getting stronger So moving on to the last question, so obviously the diagram we need is the metallic bonding diagram. Strontium's in group two, so we need a lattice of SR2 plus ions. So I always draw three rows of three and I offset the middle row. You don't have to do that, you could just put them all underneath each other if you want, but that's how I do it. And obviously we need some delocalized electrons dotted around in the spaces. So why has it got a high melting point? Well, there's obviously a strong attraction between the sr2 plus ion and the delocalized electron so a large amount of energy is needed to break that metallic bond and why has it got very good electrical conductivity that's because the delocalized electrons can move